Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bold. Yellow Aki. I'm Hey guys, how's it going? We're back in normal territory this week. I don't know if I can be as exciting as last week's videos. Check them out if you haven't, but I will go ahead and try. This should be a fun one though. I was a little cautious about making this since it's not very general. It's pretty specific to this channel, but we're gonna be talking about five species I'm really targeting as my next reptile that I kind of want to explore. And these are pretty exciting. You'll see two common themes overall of where I'm looking in the future reptile wise and lizard wise. I'm, I'm pretty still focused on lizards here. Sorry, snake people, but let's get to it. And we'll count these five in backwards order. Starting off with a fun one at number five, Varanus Salvatore Comaini. Now this is your black dragon, which is basically a subspecies of your Asian water monitor, Varanus salvator. Now in the hobby, most Khomeini are actually just melanistic, melanistic, I can't pronounce it. I know how to say it, I can't pronounce it. Melanistic mutations of your Asian water monitor. Not true Khomeini, but anyway, it's what we refer to as our black dragon in the hobby. And these, I gotta say, they were my number one before I went down to Iguana Land. So you can really tell how much this top five list is gonna fluctuate before I'm actually able to make a decision here and go ahead and move on something. But these guys are incredible. I love kind of the bluish hue that some of them can have to their blackness that, you know, is what defines them, a black dragon. I'm really excited about potentially getting one. These guys get really big, and I've been seeing a lot of pictures lately. I don't know if Facebook has been tracking me and what I've been Googling, but I get a lot of pictures showing up on my feed lately. This is definitely a strong number five, and you'll definitely not hear the last of Verana Salvatore moving forward. By the way, guys, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner. Hit the bell as well for the latest updates. We're just talking today, but soon enough, one of these guys will be joining me and being something that I will be doing content on. So be prepared for that, be excited for that, and definitely subscribe to stay tuned. In terms of reptiles that have been on my radar, this one has probably been on there the longest among this group, and that's your sailfin dragon, your hydrosaurus weberi amboinensis, or pustulatus. Now, I'm probably more focused on amboinensis or pustulatus because they have a little bit bigger of a sail, and that's what I love about sailfin dragons. Weberi, they're a little bit more accessible, but you know, I, I really would love to go the extra mile if I'm gonna get one of these and get one of the ones that I truly desire, especially the pustulatus. Those are your Philippine sailfin dragons, and they have wonderful purples in them, so I would really love to be able to get my hands on one of them. Now, these are especially rare, and a lot of those bred in the U.S. self and dragons, there's a lot of mix among those three subspecies. Now, I believe, or three subspecies, three species of self and dragon. Now, I believe there's two more, but I don't really hear about them too much, so we're going to kind of disregard them. But I'll be looking into these guys. I don't know if they're the strongest contender for my next reptile, but definitely something that I cannot say I can go through life without wanting or getting. And I know there's a wonderful breeder, Zion Hill Exotics, near where I'll be moving in Jersey, that breeds self and dragon. So who knows? Maybe when I go tour there, uh, you know, who knows? <laughs> As we reach towards number one, we'll talk about number three, Cyclora lewisii hybrid. Now, Cyclora lewisii is not allowed in the United States in terms of private keeping, but that's just fine because I'm actually particularly interested in a hybridized version, and that's with a Cuban rock iguana, Cyclora nubula, or nubula, I always say that wrong. But anyway, these guys are really awesome, and I really did not see how awesome they were until visiting Iguana Land. Cyclora lewisii, they are called blue iguanas, and let me tell you, there is good reason to call them that. They have a very blue head especially, and their coloring is just so amazing in terms of that. And mixing that with a Cuban rock iguana, that is just personality with color. It's just kind of an amazing combination there. So this is definitely a species I'm gonna keep my eye on looking forward, and definitely up there in terms of iguana. Now, while getting a Cyclora lewisii hybrid would be amazing, 
I would still love a Cyclora Nubula on their own. Cuban rock iguanas have been the iguana to want me to get an iguana. I mean, when I first got in the reptiles, I saw green iguanas. I was like, do not want that. And then I saw there was another side of iguana where they actually were very communicative with humans. And I feel like especially Cuban rock iguanas, they go with the head bobs and really interact with you. Now, maybe I just saw the select few who have done that, but but I don't know. I fell in love with them from the start. There is a problem though, and that problem is they're not as accessible as I would like. I do see them from time to time, but it's definitely not like getting Cyclora Lucy hybrid or something like that. So, you know, it would take a little bit more effort than I would like to find one, but this has been a dream of mine from the start to get one of them and definitely one of my top five dream reptiles. I've talked about this in the past. So hopefully one day, maybe I end up keeping one. Getting down to business at number one, we're gonna be talking about Varanus kamingi. Now this species I did not hear about until Iguana Land, you guys can probably tell that's a pretty often thing so far in this, I don't, I don't know what that was, in this video that I discovered a lot of new cool species at Iguana Land, but this one in particular is stunning, amazing, this is otherwise known as your yellow-headed water monitor. They are actually a subspecies of water monitor, Varanus salvator, and now are a species in their own right. They are not that available in the United States. Now they are, it's possible, there's potential, but I don't see them as often. And I haven't done a lot of research either, but it definitely looks like it's gonna be a piece of work, but this is definitely number one on the hype train right now. There is a backup though, let's just say it just doesn't go right. Definitely the sulfur locale of Asian water monitors is a next runner up. They look very similar, but are a little bit lighter in their yellow colors and just lighter in their overall coloring. So if that doesn't go to plan, getting a yellow headed water monitor, then I will definitely look into the sulfur. I believe it's sulfur, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's how it's pronounced, but the sulfur locale of an Asian water monitor, which even them are not too easy to find, but definitely a lot easier than Kamingi, which I believe is the pronunciation of that too. I'm learning a lot of new uh, scientific names this time around, but that's my five guys. So tell me, did you guys notice a pattern there? Because I did. It really breaks down to Cyclora versus Varana Salvatore, I feel like. The Asian water monitor versus really any of the Cyclora species, specifically the Cuban rock iguana or a hybridized version with Lewisai. Those were four or five pretty much. I know one's not really an Asian water monitor anymore, but you guys get it. You watched the video, right? As a follow up, you guys probably noticed these are really large reptiles pretty much in terms of the entire reptile keeping hobby, specifically for someone living in an area where they cannot do all outdoor enclosures year round. So I have that in mind. I understand that fully, but I am hoping that I can still pull it off and I would really want to work with one of these species. I cannot see a life in which I don't work with these five all at some point. So I'm really intending to go all out, figure it out, and take the next big step in my reptile journey and really keep one of these. Hopefully come fall, who knows? Let me know which one of these you guys would love me to keep. I would love to hear back from you because that's definitely gonna play a little bit of a role. I'd be happy keeping any of these five. So anything that can give some leverage to one or the other would be much appreciated. And were you surprised by these? I know a lot of these were more recent discoveries of mine. So let me know all that in a comment. I would appreciate it. Leave a like as well. Let's get to a couple of announcements before wrapping up the video. Of course, we gotta start with our Patreon shout out. I'm I'm gonna try to get to this quick because you guys are slowly falling off my head. I'm losing real estate. I got like one more spot right here and then I gotta go to the Sun Plant B I don't know about, but I wanna shout out new Patreon, Brandon G. I appreciate your support so much. We'll get a proper sticker soon. Don't you worry about it. I just gotta get to printing it. Otherwise, I wanna shout out Chris Cuts, Darian J, Cat and Rick, David T, Angela L, Smooth Cat, Stephanie S, Ellen M, Hex, Toothy Chicken, and Adam B. 
Thank you so much for your support. I just had to make sure I had everyone. If you guys want to support the channel, you can for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. Tier three gets you on my forehead and figures out what happens when I lose real estate up there. You guys can get $5 off your first purchase of rep dealings by using code Professor Rep at checkout. Also, there's a link in the description that directly applies that code for you. Rep Links is a very nutritious diet for tegus, hognose snakes, blue tongue skinks, and more. I use it for my tegu frap exclusively and he's been doing wonderful on it so i definitely recommend it five dollars off your first purchase of them code professor up at checkout all right guys thanks for watching leave a like comment and subscribe comments help a ton so definitely leave one i would appreciate it check out the teespring as well that is the merch left of my head right of your screen link is in the description and i'll see you guys in the next video bye everyone